right guys welcome back to the channel and today i'm going to be doing something a little bit different uh, i want to give a shout out to one of my patreons soran uh, who actually sent me a couple of noble demons uh, as well as carl who actually sent me um, some plague bearers to make up what would be the contents of a noble demon start collecting box and i really really want to paint something completely different to what i've been painting for a long time and i want to do it in a completely different way so i've seen some fluorescent paint that i quite like the look of um, and i'm really really fancying doing something with that that makes a really big splash and contrast and something that really really draws your eye to it so let's go and have a look at what we've got so let's get started straight away i've got the star collecting box here and i've already primed it black and we're going to use a few colors that i really want to stand out as the base coat we're going to start with hexed lichen by vallejo with a small amount of alien purple but this is what i want to use this contrasts quite well with the purples i feel uh, and this is fluorescent green uh, from green stuff world so the idea is that we're going to spray this from underneath as an under light um, rather than sort of a zenithal highlight we're going to do this reverse and the green should hopefully complement the purple quite well so of course to get a smooth coat I am going to be putting this straight in the airbrush with a little bit of thinner. We're going mostly hex lichen with a little bit of alien purple. Give it a good mix and when ready we'll cover the entire collection. And once the drones are done, we'll move on to the plague bearers themselves. And once they are all complete, we're going to go back now with just alien purple. And we are going to pr uh, provide just a zenithal highlight from the top. I still want it to look as though there is some lighting on the top. Um, the hex lichen is very, very dark. So we're just going to go from the top and the sides here with Alien Purple. With that being complete, we're now going to use some Dead White by Vallejo with just a single drop of alien purple in there and we're going to paint the wings of the drones with this now i am going to leave the very front membrane um, and the, the sort of bony bit purple and we're just going to cover the rest of the wing make sure you're covering both sides and i've tried to make sure that the white is a little bit brighter on the edges of the wings where you can see the holes in them And one cool effect that I accidentally discovered was using flip paint over white. It actually comes out quite nice and gives that sort of pearlescent effect. Now this is 4D Glasses by Turbo Dark. Really, really nice colour. It's sort of a greeny blue to a slight purple tint. Uh, and I'm actually going to put this over the, the white of the wings. Now, you can't see it very well on camera, but in person and when it dries you can really really see the glitter and the shine uh, very much a pearlescent feel so now that that's dried and i've cleaned up a little bit i'm taking a look and i'm actually quite liking the effect that we're getting here but the important thing is to now move on to paint in the details and straight away we're going to crack on with the metals and use warp block bronze and we're going to paint all of the swords the bells and any other metals that are on the miniatures. Wow. 
Next up, you'll notice a lot of the models have these really big boils on them and the eyeballs as well. Uh, they've got boils on the shoulders, the stomachs, and you can see here on the drones, they've got them all over their sides as well. Um, I think a yellow would really, really stand out on the purple, so we're going to use Avalon Sunset to pin in the majority of the boils. Uh, I'm not going to do them all because there is a lot, uh, but the majority of them I am going to cover with Avalon Sunset. And quite a while later, once they're all done, we're now going to paint all of the guts and intestines that are hanging out of all of the models. I'm going to use Pink Horror for this, and there's a reason for this, which will become apparent very, very soon. Next is to use Ogryn Camo, and I'm going to use this to pin all of the teeth and any bony structures coming out of any heads. Uh, I like Ogryn Camo because it's got that green sickly tinge to it, and I think when I add the fluorescent green, this will really act well as like a bone colour, just showing that the bones are kind of hinted with that green fluorescent. And then we're going to use a Druki Violet uh, wash and we're going to cover all of the pink as well as the yellow. Um, it really helps dull down the yellow uh, and I feel like the recess shading between the yellow and the purple using the Druki Violet um, really, really makes it stand out and pop. And of course, uh, it's the perfect colour to shade all of those intestines uh, and fleshy and gut bits with it as well. We'll then use Cadian Flesh Tone to paint any faces. There is a couple across the all of the models in the set, so I'm just using Cadian Flesh Tone uh, to get those coloured. And then we're going to use Zandri Dust for any of the hair. Zandri Dust is a very good base for a sort of blonde hair. Then we're going to cover all of the flesh, the hair and of course the bronze using Agrax Earthshade. This really helps dull it down uh, as well as create a shade in those recesses. And a Thonian Camo shade for all of the Augur and Camo. You can see here I painted the staff from the banner in Augur and Camo as well. And I just think that the green sort of brown ties in really really nice. Next up I'm going to use Magenta Fluorescent by Vallejo. I picked this up quite a while ago and we're going to use this to just highlight all of the guts with it. So I'm not painting it uh, on very thickly here, just a little bit over the really raised edges. And this really, really stands out against the purple. Uh, and I was pleasantly surprised at how much it actually stood out uh, and popped. And to highlight all of the yellow, we're going to use Moon Yellow by Vallejo. This is incredibly bright. Uh, this is brighter than any of the yellows I've seen from GW. But I'm just, just highlighting all of the tips of the yellow boils. That I previously washed and my word this turns out very very bright and then we're going to dry brush all of the bronze with brass scorpion uh, it's a really nice color and just helps accent and highlight the bronze give it that tarnished feel And almost last, we're going to use a Shabti Bone to dry brush all of the bone colours, so all of the horns, uh, the banner, bearer poles, um, and any teeth. So at this point, um, I've been hearing a lot of things about using white ink um, through the airbrush as, as kind of a zenithal instead of white paint. 
So I'm gonna give this a go. Now I won't lie, I'm very worried about this. I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna work out. I've never used this in the airbrush. I've never used this before. So hopefully it doesn't ruin the models. And I'm gonna to have to be very careful. Um, doing a zenithal from underneath is gonna be very, very different. Um, but I'm a little bit excited. I know the white is possibly going to dilute the colours that I've just done down. But the hope is that when I go over it with the green, it really makes that green pop and stand out. So here we go. Windsor & Newton White Calligraphy Ink. I've used about 25% thinner in this. Uh, and it's coming out quite nicely. And I'm terrified. <laughs> Um, so here we go, we're just going to go very, very lightly from the bottom and build those layers up. Especially sort of under the belly, under the knees, the bottoms of the arms, and a little bit under the chin as well. So you can see here, I've done all the models. Looking from underneath, it does look as though the whole model is possibly white. Um, but here's what I've done with the drones as well, so all the underbellies, the underside of the legs, and you can see I've done a little bit of the underside of the arm of the rider as well. And now for fluorescent green. <laughs> Let's see how this works. Uh, it looks very, very bright in the bottle, brighter the more it actually looks on camera for you guys. So we'll get that mixed up with a little bit of thinners, and then we're going to go ahead and cover all of the white now it's important with the green fluorescent to do multiple thin coats this is a very very thick paint I had to water it down quite a bit um, so you can see here I'm having to do very very small coats uh, the airbrush kept clogging with this so yeah I did have a lot of problems getting this through the airbrush but I persevered thinned the paint down and kept going with several small layers and the green on top of that white wow But before we show you the finished models, it's now time for the bases. So I'm using some uh, cork here. Uh, I'm just going to rip it up into small pieces and create a very small ridge or pool on all of my bases um, so that I can essentially make what looks like a fluorescent green water pool. So I'm using super glue here and I'm just going to super glue all of the cork in sort of a semicircle around the edges of the base. Uh, before we build it up with Astra Granite coming up next. So here we go, this is Astra Granite Texture Paint from Games Workshop. I had this left over from the Conquest magazine. But I'm going to apply this to all of the bases using my free coffee stirrer from McDonald's, Greg's, Costa, wherever. Uh, the cork just helps build up that uh, sort of ridge to create a pool. So I'm going to make sure that I cover all of the cork all the way around, uh, as well as cover the base in the middle as well. And I'm going to do this on all of the bases, including the 65mm bases for the drones. I just want to take this moment to give our Patreons a huge shout out, in particular the silver and gold level ones. We've got Wise Old Worm, Tyrannic Veteran, Nathan Young, The Holy Father, Sons of Rollo, Gareth Thomas, Ryan Kelly, Craig Thompson, Earl Martin, Kevin Walters, John O. Johnson, Grant Fraser, Matthias Pelk, Scott Condon, Terry Millard, John O'Neill, Mark Burton, Rick Lewis, Robert Dunn, Stephen Dunn, and James. 
If you guys would consider supporting me via Patreon, it would really mean the world to me and helps me keep producing videos like this. Also, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and press that bell icon so you don't miss any uploads. Now, I'm gonna leave them to dry overnight and when I came back to them, I forgot to record this section, but I actually just dry brushed them uh, very lightly with Celestra Grey just because the textured paint is kind of one dimensional. So we really want to make that texture stand out by giving it that light dry brush. Then it's back to the airbrush. We're gonna use the white ink to kind of paint in between uh, the crevices and the pools that I've created on the bases. And this is just so that we can cover over this with the fluorescent green uh, to make sure that it, it's really, really bright. Then once the white is dry, we'll go straight back in with the fluorescent green, straight over the top of the white. Uh, it's okay to get a little bit on the edges uh, of the grey. Um, it does help sort of blend it in and give that illusion of glow uh, and that perception as well. As the bases are now almost ready, we're going to paint the rims of them using Mechanicus Standard Grey. I felt that this was a pretty good match to the astral granite and so just tied everything in. Next up to make them really look like uh, bodies of water or toxic pools we're going to use some gloss medium. Uh, I picked this up in the range for about £9. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just putting a thin layer uh, on top of where the fluorescent green is. I don't necessarily want it to be like a whole water pool. I want it to be goop, so I want the, the coating of this to be quite thin in comparison to if I was doing a water pour. So I'm just using the spatula here to apply it um, and just pull the edges up ever so slightly to, the, uh, to where the pool would end. Now I'm being a little bit cheeky here, I should probably let it set overnight again before I glue the models on but I'm super excited to get this project finished so I'm actually gluing around the pools uh, and we'll glue the plague bearers on like so using super glue um, just to make sure that we get that really firm application. There we go. And I'm going to do this with all of the models. But we have one more step to go. We're going to use this Neon Alien Grass from Gamers Grass. Um, I think this is absolutely perfect to go with this force. So I'm going to apply it just using a little dab of super glue where I'm going to place a grass tuft and then using a pair of tweezers lift one of the tufts off and glue it on and place it like so. I'm going to use probably one or two small tufts per plague bearer and possibly three or four per drone as they are on a much bigger base. And here we go, the finished start collecting box. This took me around about eight or nine hours in total to paint up and I am super happy with the way that these have turned out. I feel like I learned a lot in relation to colour theory here. I think the greens uh, contrasting the purples and of course using yellow opposite the purple as well. Um, using the opposite primary and secondary colour really made these stand out. So I feel like I definitely learned a lot in relation to colour theory here. But also the fluorescent green under lighting, I feel like I really pushed my skills with the object source lighting. This isn't something that I've really done before um, and created lighting to this effect. I've only ever done sort of headlights, plasma glow and similar things. So I'm really, really happy with the way these have turned out. I feel like the alien grass really, really sets off the bases as well as of course the gloss medium that I use there. So I'm super, super happy with the way these have turned out, guys. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them as this was just a fun project that I decided I wanted to try and take on and really push my skills. 
Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video guys. Please make sure you hit subscribe uh, and consider becoming a Patreon if you would like to support me uh, going forward. But thank you very much for watching folks and we'll see you again very soon.